Welcome to Men Alive, a biblical journey to help us become conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Paul Estabrooks. Our teacher is my longtime friend, Dr. Jim Cunningham, consultant in adult education and director of Go Teach Global. So Jim, you and I have been friends for over 60 years. During that time, I know you have fasted for varied lengths of time. Share some of the things you've learned about fasting. Just mentioning the word fasting may be enough to scare some men, but stay with me, men. I believe fasting is probably the least understood and the most difficult spiritual discipline to practice. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, when you fast, do it in secret. I know he did not say if you fast, but rather when. So let's consider what is fasting and when do you do it? First, to understand what happens when you fast, let's imagine a conversation between your stomach and your brain. Did you know, Paul, that your your stomach talks to your brain? I believe it does. My father used to call his stomach my enemy. Then he'd laugh and say, the Bible says, feed your enemy. I remember your dad saying that, Paul, but I also believe our brain talks to our stomach. Let me explain. It took a few fasts to learn their secret language, but I think I've broken the code. Here's what they're saying. First day, stomach, good morning, brain, nice day. What's on the menu for breakfast? Brain, nothing. Stomach, nothing? You must be kidding. Are we in a rush again? A little late, perhaps? How about a quick cup of coffee and some sweets? Brain, no. We are going to spend the day fasting. Stomach, and what does that mean? Brain, it's rather simple. Instead of spending time preparing and eating food, we're going to take that time and read scripture, pray, and get involved in an Isaiah 58 project. Stomach. What is an Isaiah 58 project? Brain. Isaiah listed a number of reasons for why the Lord requested that we fast. Isaiah said we are to fast to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free. We use this extra focused time to intercede and to pray for those experiencing injustice wherever they are. We could spend extra time praying for persecuted Christians or people trapped as child laborers or sex slaves or whatever injustice we know exists in our region. Secondly, Isaiah says that we fast to share my food with the hungry, to shelter the poor, wander it, to clothe the naked. Many Christians listening to this broadcast live in areas where the above needs surround them on a daily basis. To fast could mean something as simple as just giving up a meal or savings to help someone in need. And lastly, Isaiah said, fasting is to not turn away from the needs of my relatives. Fasting is a time to focus on the spiritual needs of our relatives, including their salvation and spiritual growth. Paul, this conversation between brain and stomach will go on for the next two days. Brain awakens refreshed. Good morning, stomach. What a great night's sleep, stomach. Tell me about it. I'm not talking to you very much today. If you're planning more of this no food nonsense, brain. Day two underway. Hey, look at the skills. We dropped a few pounds off in 24 hours. This could get you in good shape, stomach. Round is a shape. But that apparent weight loss is nothing. I just got rid of the extra water you've been sending down here, and I've had so much water I was able to do a little cleaning and power wash some toxins off the walls. Feels good to get rid of them. Brain. See, I told you you would like it. Stomach. Like it. I hate it. I'm shrinking. It's time to end this game, brain. Do you hear me? Brain. Threats, threats, threats. I do not respond well to threats. Let me remind you of some facts, stomach. You have lots of reserves down there. Lots of them. And you can miss meals up to 40 days before you really have a problem. Beyond 40 can be a problem. It might even cause some blindness if you go past 40. But after day three, right through to whatever day I choose to end this fast, you have shrunk as far as you're going to shrink stomach. So I don't want to hear any more grumbling. Understand? Silence. Stomach. Understood. Then stomach mutters to himself, brain is dead. We are now in survival mode. So stomach makes a few calls. Hello, hello, hips, hips, hi. It's me, stomach. Yeah, 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 you look good. Hey, um, we have a little situation over here. Brain appears to be dead. Yep, 
No more food coming. I tried everything. I agree. Yes, he may come to his senses, but hey, my love. In the meantime, I have a small favor to ask. Could you, you know, those extra sweet calories that I sent to you after the last party and you've had them hanging around for a while? I need them back today. Yeah. Can you send them over right away? Fast. Thanks, love. We're in this together. Remember, if old brain starts eating again, I'll trick him into overeating and send back everything you give me now plus lots more. Deal? Okay. Brain. Ah, day four. Finally, silent. Stomach has stopped complaining. No liquidy gurgles, no groans, no moans. I can even smell food better than ever and not feel hungry. End of my dialogue between my stomach and my brain. Men, for the remainder of the fast from day four forward, there is usually very few hunger pang. Fasting provides the body's system with a rest digestive, glandular, circulatory, they all get rid of waste and clean up the body. Before you continue, let me remind our listeners that this is Men Alive with Dr. Jim Cunningham from Go Teach Global. We invite you to visit our website at goteachglobal.com. There you will find lots of teaching topics by Dr. Jim and learn what the purpose and ministry of Go Teach Global is all about. He and I have also written a text used around the world titled Standing Strong Through the Storm. It's in its third edition and has been translated into more than 48 languages. You'll also find some videos of Standing Strong Through the Storm teaching on Dr. Jim's website, as well as the YouTube link to 12 webinar videos recently offered on the topics from the SSTS text. While there on the Go Teach Global website, you can see and listen to all or any of the episodes of this radio program and podcast, Men Alive. As of this recording, there are 128 programs there on many different topics, as well as comments from you, our listeners. Another of Dr. Jim's website pages allows you to download all the free documents offered here on the Men Alive programs. There is one we want to especially highlight on this program. It is titled, Live the Jesus Way. Dr. Jim and I want to see everyone living the Jesus Way, and that's why we're offering this special digital booklet. It contains 30 daily devotionals based on verses from two sources of the New Testament where Jesus identifies the key elements of his unique teaching. Each devotional highlights a scripture passage with a short comment and often concludes with a story. Then there's a response and a prayer at the end. We believe it will encourage and help you reflect the grace and character of Jesus of Nazareth to each person you meet in each of your roles as a man. Live the Jesus Way is free for the downloading at www.goteachglobal.com. And, of course, you can always contact Dr. Jim with your questions at menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. That's menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. Spiritually speaking, a time of fasting gives you extra time to be alone with the Lord, to read, to pray, to re-examine your motives, goals, and values. There have times in my life when I felt compelled to fast about a difficult circumstance or a decision or a person, or a task. I then fasted and prayed for a specific topic or person or problem. Let me give a personal reflection. Over the past 50 years, I have tried a variety of fasts from one day right up to a 28-day fast. Not all my fasting was done correctly. I often did not follow my own advice and rest while fasting. At times, I tried to accomplish my usual work routines as well as fast. During my 28-day fast, with no food, only water, by day 28, I had flushed all the electrolytes out of my body from too much water, lowered my blood pressure below healthy, and ended up in the hospital for a two-hour electrolyte IV drip. Rita, my wife, who is also a nurse, along with my family doctor, both suggested that I stop long fasts. But a highlight occurred during one of those fasts. I was alone in a cabin. No one else was around and I sensed the overpowering smell of fresh bread, twice. 
I can only suggest that Jesus Christ, the bread of life, was there with me in a very significant personal manner. I cherish the time alone with him. If my research on fasting has produced any value for you, the listener, let me offer some personal reflections. Fasting has many physical and spiritual benefits, but fasting is not an efficient method for losing weight. Most weight loss from fasting is water and muscle and is regained rather quickly after the fast ends. It does give the body a rest and a flush. Just drinking water for 24 hours gives your digestive system a rest and helps flush out toxins in the body. My fasting hero is Moses. He did what I call a supernatural God-ordained 40-day fast without food or water. It's impossible in the natural world to go more than a few days without water, and food is different. But beyond 40 days can give you eyesight problems. Fasting gives your body a complete rest. Your digestive system gets a break. The heart does not have to work as fast. In conclusion, I would like to highly recommend what I call the day of rest fast. It follows the Hebrew pattern of the day beginning at sundown. Here's how it works, using Sunday as an example. You would get up Sunday morning, have breakfast as usual, go to church, come home, have lunch with your family and friends, and then miss dinner Sunday evening. Your fasting would begin Sunday evening. Skip watching TV or the internet. Just set some time aside Sunday evening to read, to relax, to meditate, to pray, to rest, and then go to bed. On Monday morning, get up, read, skip breakfast, skip lunch, Drink water or clear juices if you need liquids, and then resume eating normal again on Monday night. This method of one day a week probably has more value in every realm than longer, albeit less frequent, fasts. Are you ready? Fast for one day and see what the Lord says to you through the scriptures as you read and meditate that day. Try it, my brothers. It could be a life-changing spiritual discipline. There you have it for today, men. We become alive unto God when we become conformed to the image of his holy Son, Jesus of Nazareth. In Scripture, Matthew says, When you give and when you pray and when you fast, not if, but when, when you do these things, you are to do them in secret. Thanks, Jim, for the insights. For a printed copy of this program's teaching, or with any questions you may have, email Dr. Jim at menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. Men Alive is a production of Go Teach Global. For more information, go to our website at www.goteachglobal.com. Until next time, I'm Paul Estabrooks on behalf of Dr. Jim Cunningham, encouraging you to be men alive, conformed to the image of Jesus Christ.